Welcome everyone to the Cisco Network Insider Series, uh, where we're going to talk about the Cisco Nexus Ultra Low Latency Solutions and how they help accelerate high frequency trading. My name is Bob La Liberté. I'm a senior analyst for the Enterprise Strategy Group. And today I'm joined by Faraz Tafez Matian. Hope I didn't mess that up. Welcome, Faraz. Thank you, Bob. And you are a technical marketing engineer for the Nexus platform. And today we really wanted to focus on the Nexus switching portfolio. And as I said at the beginning, more specifically, the, the Nexus 3550 portfolio itself. So let's sure. get started for us. What distinguishes the Nexus 3550 series portfolio from any of the other Nexus switch portfolios? Sure, Nexus 3550 series switches are based on highly programmable FDGAs that are optimized for ultra low latency environments, especially for the financial market. FDGAs offer higher flexibility than traditional ASICs, so we can re-optimize the Nexus 3550s and smart NICs with the new applications, something that you can't usually do with traditional switches and NICs. Got it. And when you said ultra low latency, what are we what are we talking about? Is this, you know, millisecond latency, You're, things like that? We were talking about picoseconds, where nanoseconds are the problem. All right, so that's a huge dip, right? Just to remind everyone, right? right? So a millisecond is a thousand of a second, and then you get into micro, which is a million, and then nano, which is uh, a billion, and the pico, which is a trillionth of a second. So you're talking really ultra low latency in these in these environments. Now, that's right. Yeah. So why is that so important for the financial market? Sure. So in the financial market, there is a very strong relationship between latency and money. What is linked in your trading infrastructure? That means you can potentially make more uh, money. Got it. So so the the quicker the less or I guess the the less the latency in these environments, the faster they can make trades, and therefore they can make money. That that seems exactly. pretty pretty uh, standard, but also. Right, that's you're talking about really high performance stuff here. So, how are the customers using it, and what benefits have they achieved? Sure. So, the high frequency traders, uh, the high frequency trading is more lost in 10 to 20 nanoseconds. So, when our customer utilizes the Nexus 3550 to shave off 200 nanoseconds of distribution and aggregation of data, that gives them a huge benefit. And they could also achieve the fastest take to trade uh, with our Nexus smart NIC switch uh, NIC. Got so it. Yeah. Overall, with the NIC and the switches, they can achieve the, the fastest uh, take to trade. Got it. Yeah. And this is a market where that latency is so important that they don't even house this infrastructure in their own data centers. They actually have it co located with the exchanges. So, that really, and, and I think even then, the exchanges have to, to provide a, a latency neutral connection for everyone in there. So it's not like, can I, have the, can I have the infrastructure closest to the exchange's infrastructure, right? It's got to be evened out, but it's, it's still incredibly ultra low latency. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's, that's really a, a quite an intense environment. Now, from what I understand, part of that ultra low latency solution includes the Nexus Smart NICs. And obviously, this is something that's been getting a lot of attention lately, this concept of smart NICs. Could you explain the importance of a smart NIC in this ultra-low latency environment? Sure. sure. Actually, more than half of the trading infrastructure is on the, switch, on the server side. So our Nexus smart NICs are designed to optimize those. In fact, most of our customers don't just buy the network switches that will have a server connected to these switches. Got it, got it, very good. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, SDKs today, right? Everything's about software and APIs and connecting in and, and having, you know, programmability and so forth, right? Even in the infrastructure, it's all about how do you get a programmable infrastructure? And, and clearly, you know, Cisco's doing a ton of that with DevNet, right? Helping organizations, helping individuals be more into that, that mode of infrastructure as software, infrastructure as code. But, you know, there's not a lot of talk about the firmware development kits and FDKs. Could you explain a little bit about that and why those matter as well? Sure. FDKs, the FDGA firmware development kit that opens up FDGA fabric inside the Nexus Smart NIC or the Nexus 3550 for custom application developments. 
these applications could be highly utilized for high frequency trading, or it could be based on any other customer need. Got it, got it. So it really allows a lot of customability or the ability to customize an application or change things pretty rapidly. Um, do you have any other examples of how these FDKs are used? Yeah, so FDKs are, um, heavy, so today it's heavily optimized for low latency applications such as high frequency trading, but some other use cases could be deep packet inspection, advanced package filtering, and even full run rate packet processing. Excellent. All right, that, that all sounds great. And just give me a quick idea of how long would it take for someone to make a change? We, we know obviously we want to have more programmability. We talked about ultra low latency and things moving fast. How long would it take someone, once they're trained up on it, to be able to make a change to an, an FDK? Uh, well, it'd be pretty quick. And um, in fact, so I want to just point out that you don't have to be the uh, programmer or FTK developer to take advantage of this, this smart mix. Off the box, they're going to be the fastest mix out in the market. And we have different level of uh, software packages that goes with them. And uh, the more you're getting advanced into the software, the, the more uh, benefits you will kind of get. Um, but once you're there into the FTK level, um, the changes could be right away, something that you can't really do with a traditional um, data center switch or uh, a NIC card. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so a lot of flexibility there. Now, you also incorporate this FPGA technology into the Nexus 3550F switch platform, and we obviously talked about your, your Nexus smart NICs as well. Um, can you explain a little bit more about how the FPGA is used and, and why that's going to matter? Sure. Uh, if you want to compare A6 to FPGAs, A6 are fixed functions, and FPGAs uh, offer higher flexibility. For example, in traditional data center switch, uh, the hardware capability is the same as day one, whereas in a FPGA-based switch um, or smart NIC, um, you could have multiple potential futures with the same physical hardware. So. Any, the, the big advantage of FPGA here is not to be tied up to the big one features and having a, pro, uh, a capability to program as, as you grow your network and as your need changes. Got it. That, and that makes a lot of sense. For environments that have to move quickly, if you had to physically remove a card or do something from the infrastructure in, in an ASIC, that would be something that would take a lot of time, cause disruption. And instead, you can leverage the FPGA technology to make those changes without having to shut down and reboot servers. Exactly. And as you pointed out, um, most of our customers are in, in high frequency trading or financial market. They have these servers in co-locations, which they don't really have easily access to them. So it's, it's a great advantage for them so they can develop that without really going back into the co-location and change the physical infrastructure. Yep, that, that's great. So I know we've been talking a lot and we wanted to focus on the, the financial market, but maybe you could touch upon as well the importance of the Nexus 3550 series and the smart mix to other markets as well. Sure. Um, as you mentioned, it's not only the financial market customers that can benefit from our Nexus 3550s and Nexus smart mix. Um, electronic patch panel, tap aggregation, or even high persistent time stamping or time synchronization are some of the examples that any other customer can benefit from. And today, as we mentioned, the FDK is highly optimized for low latency applications, but it could potentially be reused for any other application. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, right? That this technology would start in one of the most demanding areas, but then start expanding outwards to provide value for other organizations, other markets as well. Exactly. Yeah. So intent-based networking, kind of an important thing for Cisco. You guys have been working on this for, for a few years. How does, how does the intent-based networking play a role in ultra-low latency networking? So in, in general, um, for high-frequency trading environment or any other customer, the intent-based networking could be a significant upgrade. Uh, the ability to implement closed-loop automations that does not require human interventions could dramatically improve the operation of efficiency. That could be in 
the financial market or any other customer out there. So I think together, they're a really good solution. Got it. Yeah, and that, that closed loop is really something that's interesting because if you think about, again, if you're in an environment where every second matters and the the ability to pull in all the information and to automatically make a decision that enables the performance to, to continue unabated, right, not having a problem, things like that, that's going to be really important for those organizations. And it's not, obviously, it'll be critically important for high-frequency trading space in the financial markets, but just in general, as more and more organizations' IT becomes complex, that concept of that intent-based networking of where you can define the policies but then have the closed-loop automation to ensure that all the SLAs or SLOs are always met on an ongoing basis, that's really going to help these organizations. Absolutely. So let's also think about this. So we, we just talked about other markets, but how do you see Cisco being differentiated specifically in the financial market space as well? Sure. sure. Um, so Cisco has a complete solution for financial customers, right? Um, it's starting with the fastest smart mix on the server level, going all the way up to the fastest distribution of data and aggregation switches with additional specialized mix for time synchronization and even capture solutions, right? So if you put them all together, this is the only company that will provide you the, the entire package that you need for financial market. All right, well, that, that's actually a really important distinction, right? You're talking about being able to go in and provide an end-to-end -end platform for a financial market, so guaranteeing that end-to-end -end performance, having that visibility from end-to-end, I think you said it was down to, what, the, the pico, picosecond for stamping and, and things like that, right? Where these are ultra-precise and accurate transactions. They need to be time-stamped. And by, by having that end-to-end -end vis end visibility, that end-to-end -end platform, you're able to control that much easier. And also, it, it ensures that you've got that capability to leverage the smart NICs and FBGAs across the entire platform as well. Exactly. And I'll I, I give you another example. Uh, for example, um, there are other smart NICs out there that are targeted for ultra low latency, but yep. they don't provide their software. And for that, you need to go uh, purchase the software from another, yet another company and vendor. So when you have multiple solutions, multiple vendors, um, it, it's kind of a challenge for support as well. If you have a problem, um, yep. you will have them pointing out each other. But when you have a complete solution um, from the NIC level to the software, to the support, to the aggregation switch, then everything is easier to deal with for our customers. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. That that makes perfect sense. You don't want people pointing fingers at each other when millions of dollars are being lost by the probably by the minute, by the second. Uh, so exactly. really important to have that to have that end to end capabilities. So listen, this has been great. I really appreciate hearing all your insights and getting that information. If someone was interested in learning more about this 3550 Nexus family, where can they go to learn more about them? Sure, they can go to cisco.com slash go slash Nexus 3550, and you can find a lot of different links and um, in, in that website. And of course, you can always reach out to us. Awesome, that sounds great. Baraz, it's been fantastic talking to you. Wanted to thank you very much for your insights, and I want to thank everyone for joining us today as well. Thank you, Bob.